Sierra Leone uh, in 2001. It was a ceasefire at the time, uh, but the war had been raging pretty hot. And first time I'd been in a war zone. Ended up uh, doing work there over a number of years, and I began to appreciate uh, security. Uh, was sensitive to the effects of war in a way that I had not been before, and also sensitive to uh, the effect of war on warriors as well as civilians. Um, started a foundation that was headed by a retired Major General uh, from the U.S. Army. He had worked in Liberia for two years post-retirement. Uh, spent a lot of time with him, a lot of time with, uh, with other veterans, talking about things, and it really educated me in a way uh, that I had not been before. And so I just became more sensitive to uh, to those experiences. Um, last February, I was coming back from Colorado. I saw uh, a gentleman in the airport in a wheelchair, triple amputee, had all his badges on. Uh, happened to be African American, and uh, he recognized and recognized me from, from some movies and we talked. And he talked about folks that had come to see him at Walter Reed. And I asked myself, you know, why wasn't I doing that? You know. And uh, so uh, I, I, I ended up doing an event around PTSD where we take Greek mythology and do stage readings of these stories, stories of, uh, of, of uh, uh, Hercules, for example, who goes on, comes back from war and a rage and kills his children. And we use those as an examination of PTSD and an opportunity to have a larger conversation, a contemporary conversation uh, around the subject. And so happened to be at an event that we did in DC, some folks from the DOD, and I asked if I could get more uh, deeply involved, and one thing led to another. And I ended up being uh, put in contact with a woman named Seema Reza, who's been uh, uh, running a writer's workshop out at Fort Belvoir and Walter Reed uh, with active service members and veterans who, uh, who are facing some, some challenges relative to their experience. So when you go tonight, and again, the event is free, but you do have to reserve a spot, what do you see? Well, it's, uh, we've got, uh, it's not, obviously, you know, it's focused on, on, on service members, but as well, there are local artists who will come and add their uh, input to it. A local dancer named Tiffany Carson, uh, a local cellist uh, uh, named Whitehold, who has been a part of the workshop for a couple of years now. A friend of mine who's a violinist at the Met in New York is going to come down to add something, uh, to add some more uh, of flavor to it. And we also have uh, a group of Syrian refugees who have used similar prompts to write poetry as well uh, there. Uh, who have uh, who will be present through a, a video, right. and so they'll blend together their stories with the stories of the service members. And because one of the things that we want to examine is that PTSD uh, is really universal, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the soldiers are suffering from combat-related uh, trauma, but there are others that uh, related to uh, bouts with cancer or sexual uh, assault. So uh, we want to broaden the understanding. One to understand that this is normal for human beings who. Uh, who you know, have had to confront uh, difficult things. Um, 